So, welcome to this part. This part will be retopologizing in Maya using the NEX tools, or the NEX tools, not sure how to pronounce that. Uh, they are a plugin you can buy from Maya, which includes a very capable uh, retopologizing program. I like this because I don't need to exit Maya and stuff like that, because I UV map in Maya as well, so this really is helpful. So, let's start off, I'll go through what I did, and yes, let's go on. So starting off here, what I did was, since I couldn't actually import my like five, like 12 million polygon mesh or whatever into Maya, because that'll crash it very easily, because Maya isn't like ZBrush, uh, what I did was I decimated it using the Decimation Master, which is one of the free plugins for ZBrush, which I believe you should have if you have ZBrush, uh, to export a uh, lower res version, which still looks basically the same as the high res version. Uh, it gives very odd geometry, but it works just fine to uh, retopologize. it does. So I did turn on the snapping in the uh, NX tools, and then I used the uh, uh, tools here, the retopologizing tools, to make it good. And what this does is you can pl place the individual vertices on the, the actual mesh yourself, and then uh, but when, if you hold shift and move your mouse in between these, you can actually place faces, and these will automatically snap to your mesh if you enable that, which is obviously what you do to read top all does. And uh, when, when I was recording this, you'll notice that that little trial window there is going to come up quite a bit. Uh, this is because I didn't. Uh, this was a trial for the next tools. I hadn't actually used those before this hand. I used uh, I just used ZBrush for retopologizing, but uh, so I wasn't sure if I would buy it or not, or you know, you know all the stuff. So I didn't know if I would buy it. So I just tried it out. This was, is using the trial. So you'll see that popping up a bit, but uh, luckily I've sped this video up enough to where uh, that is actually not going to be that bothering to you. I hope so. That should be fine. Uh, I'm just going to show myself retopologizing the body here, uh, the actual body of the tree, like the, the base trunk. Uh, I'm not going to show my show the uh, show the branches because that is it's basically just the same as this. It's just very very tedious and. Uh, while I'm sure it's educational in one way or another, I don't see the reason to bore you with it. It's basically just doing the same stuff. So, what is very important to keep in mind whilst we topologizing, more or less very, very important, even more so than sculpting, uh, than when you're sculpting, uh, is the silhouette. This is so much important because when you re topologize, chances are you're doing it, well, at least when I do it, chances are I'm doing it because I want to bake it down. Because I want to bake the model down into stuff like normal maps, ambient occlusion maps, and similar things of that nature. And when doing that, you need to, at least with the normal maps, you really need to consider what you want to fake existing. Because obviously with normal maps, you can't actually have all the geometry included, uh, because that would be silly, and that's kind of actually like to remove the purpose of normal maps. But, uh, so you need to kind of keep in mind what you want to keep as geometry, what you don't, and what you just make want to make look like it. So stuff like maybe some of these really tough, like, uh, cylindrical bread like out protruding stuff on the uh, base of the tree some of that stuff i might not actually have to model in my maybe i'll just make some job that points out in that direction and the normal map will make it look like it actually exists while it uh, you know in fact doesn't generally what normal maps does normal maps are very good at that fact and, and uh, you know that's all very good so i'm going to actually with this model since i wasn't actually planning on making it actually game ready like optimizing it poly-wise. I actually kept myself quite open uh, poly count wise so I didn't actually bother keeping myself in very low poly range. I mean, it turned out to be fairly low poly. I mean, it turned out to be, uh, I think, around 4,000 triangles. I don't, can't actually remember. I'll, I'll check it up later if you really want to know. If you want to know the final poly count, you can ask me in the comments and I will tell you that. Or maybe I'll just make a video at the end of this. On this I'm not entirely sure, but... Um, it turned out fairly low poly, but I mean, you I could always op optimize this way more. I just wanted it to look good for the final render, because I wanted a final render, and I, I got just that. So here you can see me placing a lot of polygons and then making the faces in between them. You can also, on the faces, if you shift, if you hold shift, then you can, uh, if you hover between, like, edges, you can add edge loops, which also automatically snap to the uh, object behind them, which is very, very useful, an incredibly good tool. Um, there's also also a good retopologizing program, well, not only that, but it does that very well, uh, 3D Coat is worth looking into, it's very, very handy, uh, you can buy that from their website, just google the name, 3D Coats, like it sounds like, uh, in one word. They have similar retopologizing tools, their tools are all, I think they're quite a bit better, but the thing is, these are fine, I don't mind, these are actually quite good, and they're inside of Maya, which is very, very important. Uh, 
because I like just it, it improves my workflow because since I UV map like in Maya natively, it just quickens everything up really just having everything in Maya natively. So that's why I use it personally. I mean, it, it, it's obviously not the best, but it's it, it works fine for me. So you know that that's just fine. That's really just fine with me. So here I'm going to do with the inside. The inside obviously doesn't need that much geometry, although I'm giving it a bit uh, anyways because uh, I'm just nice like that. The thing about the next tools, uh, the retopologizing ways of it, uh, you can't actually make triangles. So, but the good thing about having Maya, having it in Maya, you, you have access to all the native Maya tools. So you can just go in. If you don't want, if you don't, if you want a triangle somewhere uh, and you can't make it with the tools here, you can just go take like the split polygon tool and you can just make a triangle like that, and it all just works. It all works out quite fine. You can also see that I. Uh, which I do when I mold too, I actually retopologize. I never smooth the normals while I retopologize because I find that to be incredibly di distracting and weird. Uh, so I keep all the normals hardened the entire way through and that's just something I do. It's just the way I do have done things all, like, all the time. So, you know, that's all well. Also, I'm going to be baking this. I'll, I'll show, I won't show the baking process. I might actually record, no, nah, it's very easy uh, because I'm baking it with X normal, which is a, uh, which is a software you can download for, for free from the Xnormal website. Again, Google is your friend. Uh, it's a very, very, very handy software. It also has a Photoshop plugin, which is very good. But the software itself is well, very, very clean. It doesn't actually render the mesh. Like, you don't see it while it's baking, which makes it a lot faster on your computer. Uh, and it's very, very good doing so. Of course, there's some downsides to that, but I mean, those downsides are very slight, uh, and so I'm going to use that, and with that, you want everything in either triangles or quads, which is just a general rule of thumb, really, when modeling stuff like this. You want to keep everything in quads or triangles, because that's just easier that way, especially if you're going to do something like a human, uh, or something like a character which will deform while animating. Uh, like n-gons, which are the multiple-sided faces, like uh, above four sides, which is a quad. Uh, if you have more than four sides, it's an n-gon, and then the, there being the variable for whatever number of sides it has. Uh, they don't deform very well while animated, actually not well at all, so that's why you want to keep them away from your model if you're going to deform it while animating. I mean, they're fine, I guess you could use them. Uh, the same actually with triangles, they don't deform as well as quads, so really with deforming like characters and stuff, you kind of do want to keep everything in quads uh, as much as possible. I mean, triangles are actually fine, they don't matter too much. Uh, you can have a couple of them in there, it doesn't actually, it's not like people are going to start crying about, about it, but uh, <clears throat> don't just keep in mind that it, it's b always better to keep everything in tries, it, it, to keep it, most things in quads than in tries, basically, that's just the rule of thumb. Uh, with N-Gons, you just want to stay away from them completely, it's very easy to get, remove them, uh, just, you know, split them into triangles or something like that. But yeah, if, you use, if you're doing like mechanical modeling, like gun modeling, if you've seen my CG Tuts video, uh, the, the modeling of the Luger P8 gun model, I, I think I covered this a bit. Triangles, they're totally fine when you when modeling like guns and stuff like that. Triangles are totally fine, and goals to an extent too. Because when you export them to the game engines, they tend to tri tri triangulate for themselves, the engine. But I find it just to be better to keep everything non and gone. Uh, because uh, that gives you more control of the geometry. Because uh, if you let the, if you let the, the model format triangulate the uh, model for you, you don't get as much control. And uh, I'm just going over this because there isn't much to go over in the video. It's very sim simple. Uh, well, I mean, retopologizing is something that you need to get used to because it's kind of a lot of judging the geometry on like what it actually is and what it isn't. You need to kind of check what you want and what you need to keep while still keeping the uh, the polygon low. Of course, the I'm not doing a very good example of keeping the polygon low because I'm trying to. Uh, just keep the shape as well as I can. Like stuff like what I'm doing here, this little ridge here, that I could very easily not just skip having completely. That's one of the things that if you are trying to keep it low res, you could definitely just not have that there because it isn't a very big part of the silhouette. 
and uh, it's like stuff you see this thing next to it with really fat stem right there that which I'm working on right now this you want to keep in even if you're working on it low poly you want to keep that uh, in the silhouette because that's a very obvious piece but stuff like the other piece I worked on before is not very obvious so I'm not gonna keep it also the way I'm moving these vertices in next I mean you can just use the Maya move tool but it's not as comfortable as just middle mouse clicking and that'll move it for you yeah, there you can see me added the image loop like I mentioned before, and I'm trying to keep even quads here, and just because it's generally just easier and it works better if I want to go back and sculpt it again. Uh, even quads actually doesn't matter too much unless you're doing it for ZBrush. In ZBrush, the model actually benefits a lot if the base of it is in even quads because then you have equal uh, detail. If you have like a really like non, if you have a lot of small phases on one part of your model and then a lot of big ones on the other one. You're going to end up, the way ZBrush divides it, you're going to end up having so much more detail on the area where you have a, like the small faces, a lot of small faces. So you can get a lot of detail there, but the, the place where uh, you have large faces, you won't be able to get that much detail. So it's just going to end up being very uneven, and that's just a... It's just a fact, like a uh, end result of how ZBrush does it, and it's just, it's it's basically logical, obviously it makes sense, but uh, it's one you, you can need to adhere to, because... Uh, Keeping even quads in ZBrush is very, it's not very important, but it's very helpful, certainly. Uh, so you see that I'm trying to, I mean, I'm trying to keep it... You need to kind of determine where you want to put triangles and not. I mean, if you don't have to, if you're doing a model like me right now, where you don't actually have to keep your point count in mind at all, uh, where you want to put triangles is actually uh, on very distinct places where geometry kind of cuts off, and you notice that if there's like a slope, and at the end of that slope, you can definitely put a triangle because there's not, no continuation of that slope. Uh, yeah, so, <laughs> sorry about that, I had to cut uh, something on happened to my video, but yes. Uh, you can see right now, uh, I'm in fact doing the parts around the rock there. Uh, I'm going to actually make the rock, since I know that there's going to be a separate like rock model on top of that one rock, I'm not going to do any fancy, super fancy detail on the rock. Uh, I mean, not that it actually has any super fancy detail on it either way, but um, I'll make it fairly decent. But what I'll do is uh, just I'm doing it fairly. I'm going to make it fairly decent just to make sure that uh, if I do choose to remove the rocks, that'll be fine. Here I'm going to going to use the uh, actual uh, the NX tool, so that the plugin has. Uh, that was the uh, merge polygon tool thing, and then you the splits or connect edges, uh, which are they're very, very similar to what Max has, but uh, added in Maya basically, which is good. I mean, I don't mind the Max tools, I, I don't like what I like, like them, in fact. However, I'm not very skilled in Max, so maybe I'm not the one to talk. Right, uh, so here we are, we're going to go go and do the other thing. I'm, again, paying attention to the back part when I really don't need to, but, I mean, it's just one. It's just a bit more content to my model. I like just having stuff on it. <laughs> like, stuff is very fun, and that's why I like doing these really, like, odd mechanical creatures and stuff like that. That's very fun doing, because they have a lot of random stuff. <laughs> uh, yeah, so... You see, we have quite a good base going on here, and we are in fact quite happy with this base. You can see, yes, uh, yeah, that's that's quite good. It, we're keeping this, you see this silhouette quite well, and we are obviously lessening the polygon cut by giant amounts because that's just the way it tends to be when you re apologize. Uh, because I mean, you generally re apologize from something with like 12 million polygons, or something that has like quite a bit less than that. But yes, yeah, so we'll continue working on here. Uh, next tools are very very good actually at this. Uh, they're very handy to use. You may have seen them around. They do cost a bit of money to buy, but I think they're very much worth it. Uh, I myself have them because they're very good. And uh, I'm using my 2011 here, which uh, they work just fine on in this video. So yes, that's perfectly okay with me. I'm using this 64-bit version as well. There are some performance issues with it, but. Uh, so here I'm just smoothing the normals, checking if you know everything looks fine, and they do. And if you don't know, smoothing the normals in Maya is uh, called softening edges, basically. So that's what I'm referring to. If you didn't realize, that's why smoothing normals, which is basically what I'm doing. But they just refer to it as softening the edges for you know some reason, which I'm sure is very good. So I'm just doing the above bit here, not putting too much detail in it because it really doesn't have that much detail, and uh, therefore doesn't need that much detail. Ha! Huh, logic, I know. 
uh, doing a lot of this stuff. I know we could just extrude these and then merge them, or well, snap them to the mod later on, but it, it's not a huge amount of time to waste anyway, so it's... Uh, and you get a bit more control just doing it manually, so I don't really mind. The actually topologizing process of this took a long time. And I mean a long time, because, uh, yeah, the branches... <laughs> They, uh, it turns out there are a lot of branches in this tree, and yes, it took quite a while to do those. There wasn't any very easy way of doing them. I noticed, unfortunately, so I had to do them all manually, and it took quite a while. And luckily for you guys, I cut all that out for you. I did record it, but yeah, I removed it because it is incredibly uninteresting. It actually, like, you watch one branch be done, and then it's just the same thing over and over for like 30 times, and that's. Why people generally don't like read topology too much? I don't mind it. I mean, on stuff like this, it does become very tedious because that's just the, just the nature of the model because it's like it's a very repetitive model, with a lot of repetitive shapes. But I mean, I don't mind general. I mean, like characters are fairly enjoyable to uh, read topologize. So I'm, I'm deliberately trying to set up a good loop there by the uh, good ring so that I can make uh, connect the uh, the. I was going to say arm, but the big branch stuff, like the spinning up branch there, too, a good ring, uh, because if I would just have it really random, it'd be really annoying actually connecting it. Connecting stuff is quite a challenge, uh, because, you know, it just is generally, and you'll know that if you uh, have any, ever done anything like it. And, uh, you know, so, sorry about that, uh, yes, it appears the video is frozen in for frame a couple of seconds, so, uh, sorry about that, uh, I can't really, I mean, it's, it's fine there as it is. So, uh, yeah, I'm not exactly remembering what I was talking about, but hey, it's something very interesting, I'm sure. So here, I'm going to go on, and I think, maybe I was talking about the rings, whatever, I think I'm tweaking the rings right now, I'm starting to, uh, extrude, so to say, although doing it very manually, uh, the first start of the branch here. Probably a better word for that than branch, but hey. So yeah, just doing it like this, very, very simple, not very difficult, but yeah, making sure to keep it clean. You want uh, you want to consider edge flow in when do, doing like the uh, kind of obscure stuff like this. Edge flow is still very, very important. You don't want to just mess up your model completely, because edge flow, uh, it, it helps with so many things, like shading and stuff like that. Uh, while this might not, actually, this tree might uh, deform while, while animating, say if there's some, like, some wind, like, blowing and very strong wind and it's actually, you know, moving with wind, like stuff like that. You just need to keep all of those different kind of things in mind when when doing these models. Here we go down another loop because I figured it was needed uh, to fill the proper detail. Obviously it actually wasn't, I mean stuff like that is just uh, me <laughs> realizing I can actually abuse my polygons a bit and waste them. Uh, you know, be a bit wasteful, and I mean, that's just having some fun, and that was probably it for this re-topologizing. I'll cut off the rest, I mean, you got the idea, of course, the rest is just a lot of branches. I think we did quite a good job, and thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time for UV Mapping.